what's up? I'm back here to uh, make another video along with two great friends from, um, where are you from? South Africa, Johannesburg. And? USA, Texas. All right. And today we are going to talk about culture shock and moving to Korea, living abroad. Culture shock is something that you heard what it is, but do you really know what it is? Now, according to these papers, printed from the internet, <laughs> the reliable sources that it is, this goes into what is culture shock. So I want to kind of give this internet textbook definition, and then we want to talk about culture shock and how it's affected us and our experiences and the different stages. Did you know there's five stages of culture shock? You're about to find out. <laughs> Culture shock is a term used to describe the more pronounced reactions to the psychological disorientation most people experience when they move for an extended period of time into a culture markedly different from their own. Culture shock is the feeling of not knowing what to do or how to do things in a new environment and not knowing what is appropriate and inappropriate. I definitely say that. Right. right? Um, culture shock is the physical and emotional discomfort one suffers when living in another country and is precipitated by the anxiety that results from losing all familiar signs and symbols of social interaction. So I, before I came here, I thought culture shock was seeing something and being like, what? Yeah. It's right. not like that in America. Yeah. Right. It's like that in America. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, they say some of the symptoms of culture shock, sadness, loneliness, melancholy, preoccupation with health, aches, pains, allergies, insomnia, and a desire to sleep too much or too little. Oh, and it goes on. Changes in temperament, pressure, feeling vulnerable, feeling powerless, anger, irritability, resentment, unwillingness, and happy others, identifying with the old culture or idealizing what country, lost identity, definitely lost identity. Seriously. I think that's one of the biggest. One of the main yeah. ones, that's number one for sure. Absolutely. Trying too hard to absorb everything in a new culture or country, unable to solve simple problems. Does math count? <laughs> I think it's more of like trivial things that we, we would consider trivial back home, but uh -huh. here it's very, we make it complex and we overanalyze it. Like it's trying to like lack of confidence. Feelings of inadequacy or insecurity. For sure. Yep. Developing stereotypes about the new culture. Yes, yes, and yes. Developing obsessive. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Developing obsessions such as over cleanly, cleanliness. I don't have that problem. <laughs> I have that problem. My apartment smells like bleach. <laughs> really? Seriously, right. I went from home to Korea and it's just. The and opposite? I get it how you live. No, it's not the opposite. It's just kind of like bringing bad habits with you. You know, everywhere you go, there you are. Well, okay. Longing for family. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that. You know, uh, feelings of being lost. Whoa, whoa. Overlooked. <laughs> exploited or abused. Now exploited. Uh, exploited, yes. Oh, yeah. Stage two. Okay. Initial elation. The traveler has feelings of euphoria and pleasure at many new encounters. This is the honeymoon stage, as all experiences are new and exciting. I'm sure on Facebook, I, I had a Facebook status initially when I arrived over my first few weeks was just how amazingly helpful and warm the Korean people were, and especially because... <laughs> Ah, 
not. No, I'm holding them under the table. <laughs> really it really is. Together. Especially because <laughs> initially I had to go to go to SMOE to get co contracts or whatever. Run around. Right, um, running around for documents, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I got lost and I had to ask for directions on the bus, etc. And some of the people were so helpful, even though they couldn't speak English, we really went, go, went out of their way to help me and struggle through the little English they had. And I was just so taken aback. I was like, wow, they're so amazing. I love yeah. Korea. Yeah, that was stage one. <laughs> for me, I, I came to Korea without expectations. I figured whatever's going to happen will happen. I didn't expect anything bad to happen to me. I didn't expect anything good to happen. It was just more of like, take it as it comes. It's an open experience. Not everybody gets this chance. I rarely had this chance, so I just seized it. And I mean, it is a honeymoon stage. I, would, I came in here, I'm like, I'm gonna learn Korean, you know, I'm right. immersed, here it is. Yeah, that was stage one. Into that. We'll go further into that. Stage two, three, four, and five. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> um, for me, I, this is my second time in Korea, as I've already said. I've lived in Asia before, so, you know, I kind of already knew what to expect. But still, it's a difference visiting versus living. And, for sure. you know, just walking down the street and seeing all the new things and seeing that everything's in Korean and I couldn't read at the time and like everything was just <laughs> I can't read and I was happy about it you know like yeah. even that was exciting and just sounding words out like Kim you know right. like when that first, right like when that, you get that um yeah just I don't know everything was just beautiful and, and you're like a sponge you just want to absorb everything and take it all at once and Go everywhere, and meet new Seriously, people. Seriously, we just went out every night. Every I think that's my on every single person. Yes. I'm just happy and to I, be here. And I loved, I loved the fact that you know, random kids in the street would just say hello to me. I was like, oh my god, like, hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a stage five. <laughs> uh, stage two, warm please. Okay, stage two, initial culture shock. The person begins to encounter some difficult times and crises in daily life and there are many feelings of discontent, impatience, anger, sadness and incompetence. The last word incompetence really resonates with me, again going back to the school school situation. Not being able to understand what's been said about me. I know when they're speaking about me, but I don't know what they're saying about yeah, me. Yeah. Um, and I often have to ask. To, for them to relay what's being discussed about me. If I don't ask, no one's gonna tell me. Mm -hmm. And you just hear warm. You know, sheep. you're right. <laughs> There's a, and with that lack of with that lack of information, I feel disempowered in my workplace. I feel disempowered being able to say what I need to say in case it's something that I disagree with or I don't like. Um, which is which is very very new <clears throat> for me. Um, sadness, uh, discontent, definitely impatience. Purely because they don't, not because they're slow, just because they don't do things the way it gets done at home. And and like, like I say, simple day-to-day -day things like going, when I went to the post office once, wow. something as simple as that made me feel like I was a complete idiot because I couldn't understand what you wanted me to do with the freaking yeah. McDonald's, and I just wanted to say no lettuce. No tomato, no mayonnaise. I just wanted pretty much a dried out patty. You get that lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> and the mayo. Don't yeah. get it. And basically, like, you know, I, <laughs> I couldn't even communicate the word no, which is like, isn't no the same? I know. Every language, right? I couldn't, no. I didn't know how to say no lettuce, no anything. I didn't know how to say, please give me the dried out patty. <laughs> like you know what I'm like, saying? You can't even make a joke like that where somebody would get it, laugh yeah. at it, and be like, "I got you." No, and I, I lost it. You know, everything had been mounting up to that point, and I just lost it at the register. Started crying, and they were looking at me. They didn't know what to do. And she's asking me what kind of drink I want, and I was, <laughs> you know, like it's just. I need a glass of wine and a tequila. <laughs> I never said I wanted a drink. <laughs> Even though it comes with a meal. Like, but it's a set. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get finished telling you I don't want this 
focus on my burger and like, still on the burger stuff. <laughs> All right. So incompetence, I definitely can agree with that. Just feeling with the most simplest day to day things. Yeah. That's why. That's why it's yeah. so impactful. I have an experience where um, my co teacher, she failed to inform me that there was no school more you were I remember that. She, she calls me up one morning and she is fuming. <laughs> She's fuming. She's like, Warren, don't believe I'm sitting outside of school and no one's here. I'm the only one here. The 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 guard who's in charge of letting, you know. Told her at 8, like, 3, 8, 8 30 p.m. You what, girl? Why are you here? The black nobody, ass here. Nobody comes to school until 9.50. And I was just like, 9.50? And it is short lived. It's like when I say. When you're feeling good about Korea and you're optimistic, it's the highest of the high. And as soon right. as you feel low, I'm it's planning Korea in my life. I was planning, yeah. you know, getting in a relationship with the Korean, mm -hmm. living, living out, living right? Out. Where we all <laughs> living out. Same for me. Like I, the, that psychological balance. Um, I felt like I was going places, and I, and I knew where I was going. You're going to the next place. <laughs> I was going to the next stage, culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>